Hello creative friends. If you've got some free time, I've got an exciting project to share with you today. The Flourishing Vase Runner. It's a new personal favorite, available in three sizes for the 5x7, 6x10, and the 7x12 hoops. The full runner features six blocks, each duplicated to create a total of 12 like our sample here. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate the stitch out of the flower one block and guide you through the quilt's construction. For detailed instructions, refer to the written photograph guide. If you're new to Solongs, join our Facebook page for monthly competitions and a 30% discount code. The link for that group is in the description of this video. If you find this tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe. Enjoy the video. First, I'll show you how to stitch our flower one panel. Start off the project by hooping up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop. First, place batting one on top of the hoop and stitch the batting down. Make sure the batting lays flat and doesn't bunch up. Now, go ahead and remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about one to two millimeters from the stitching. Be careful not to cut the seam stitching though. Next, place fabric A right side up on the hoop, covering the batting and stitch it down. Then remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Remember to leave the excess fabric in the seams. Stitch the place on line for the top of the vase. Cut a piece of fabric large enough to cover the place on line and place it right side up on top of the place on line and stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Leave the excess fabric in the seam. Embroider the quilting. Embroider the detail and satin stitch around the top of the vase. Embroider the flowers in the vase as follows. The number corresponds to the step number. Same thing, embroider the butterfly as follows. The number corresponds to the step number. Remove from the hoop and trim the seams to about half an inch. Hold the side until all your panels are made. You will want to make two of the flower one panel. Using your regular sewing machine now, follow these simple steps to join the blocks. Start by exploring various layout options for your blocks. And once you've settled on your preferred arrangement, lay them out accordingly.
In the initial step, take the first two blocks and position them right sides together. Ensure precise seam alignment by carefully pinning, making sure seams, satin stitch and corner points match precisely. Use these pinpoints as a guide while stitching the side seam on your sewing machine. Aim to stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks to keep the stitching concealed on the right side in later stages. Open the seams and iron them flat. Repeat this process until each horizontal row of blocks is joined. Next, join the horizontal rows by aligning the first two rows with right sides together. Pin and stitch the seams using your sewing machine, ensuring you stitch just inside the existing border on the blocks to conceal the stitching on the right sides later. Open out the stitch seams and iron them flat. Continue this process until all the horizontal rows are joined. Finally, I will show you how to cut and add the backing. Begin by measuring the length and width of your project. Ensuring that your pieces of fabric E backing are sufficiently large enough. Place the two fabric E pieces right sides together on your table. Pin and stitch a half inch seam along one edge, leaving a six inch gap in the middle for turning the runner. Now press the seam open and position your sewn runner on top of fabric E right sides together. Lightly pin them. Stitch a half inch seam just inside the border stitching. Trim the edges of your runner to a quarter inch and clip the curves.
turn it right side out through the opening in the backing seam. Then run a point over chopstick or that pink thing along the seams on the inside to help the runner sit flat. Then press firmly again. Then optionally, you can stitch in the ditch, ensuring your bobbin matches your backing fabric. Choose main seams to hold the central blocks flat. Note that stitching in the ditch is invisible on the front, with stitching lines visible only on the back side of the runner. Ensure the bobbin thread matches the backing fabric and the top thread is invisible or matches the fabric in the seam. My creative friends, give your work a final press with the iron and congratulations, your runner is now complete. I really hope you enjoyed the Flourishing Vase Runner tutorial. From stitching flower one panel to joining blocks and cutting the backing, we've truly covered it all in this video tutorial. Remember to experiment with your layouts and be creative and soon you'll have a polished and finished project like our sample. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and join our Facebook page for monthly competitions and a 30% discount code on this design. Congratulations on completing your runner. And if you want to make your runner, head over to swpea.com and you can make your purchase there. See you next time.